नमस्कार एवरी वन वेन वी सी द रियालिटी अराउंड अस वी फील द अर्ज टू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू इट्स डेवलपमेंट फ्रॉम एजुकेशन टू हेल्थ ट्रांसपोर्ट बैंकिंग टू कम्युनिकेशन देर आर एन नंबर ऑफ पब्लिक सर्विसेस विच नीड इम्प्रूवमेंट वाइल बींग अ कंज्यूमर ऑफ दिस सर्विसेस वी डिमांड हाई क्वालिटी एंड प्रॉम सर्विस विथ जीरो करप्शन एंड टू एंश्योर दिस many people have been trying to find solution to this perennial problems professor harsh purohit in one of his old videos talked about vuka and w uh, let's hear to him uh, about the brief concept what is all about vuka and w so while the vuka stands for volatility uncertainty complexity and ambiguity the nw2 uh, more components that we have added n stands for the natural apathy and w stands for wisdomlessness so we are into that era which uh, i would say that in much better way has been uh, compiled uh, by our ancient uh, scriptures as a term called as kalyu so you might find that this is one of the key factors which is uh, determine our day to day affairs also and uh, many people have been trying to find answer to these issues some feel good governance is the key some feel education is the fundamental thing and needs to be changed and so they keep on contributing to it accordingly one such set of people find answer in the bhartiya culture across the globe we can witness rising interest of management scholars in the domain of consciousness spirituality philosophy and you might also come across various seminars conferences being research papers being written and books being uh, documented uh, uh, many reports being generated to further this cause now what is more interesting for bharti people is that in this domain we have a natural advantage given the strong foundation of darshan and adhyatma across the diverse cultures and traditions from north to south and from east to west however in absence of clarity of thought process and the ability to link it with the management many scholars in our country do not take up these ideas in the academic research or for the discussion in the classes to address this gap in this module we will seek inputs from shri sampat ayangar ji who is a former global technology ceo and a private equity investor with deep interest in vedanta darshan he has conducted interesting sessions like vedanta at workplace for multiple times uh, for a global uh, set of uh, professionals ceos and has delivered a talk at im bangalore tedx on dharmic capitalism so uh, we requested him to share his inputs and uh, he has shared some uh, inputs uh, to some of the questions that i will be asking him uh, so let's begin uh, discussion with him uh, how can the knowledge that our scriptures hold make a difference to our professional success at one level the principles of vedanta can be a bedrock on which you as a professional can build your career by understanding your true potential for achievement at your current stage of life and then channeling your set of behavior and actions toward that direction at another level the concepts are so deep clear yet nuanced and universal that it allows breakthrough thinking on very complex problems this is because vedanta helps you observe relevant signals without the noise then again as a former global ceo I can tell you that it's impossible to lead a dynamic organization without a set of clear principles. Principles that are articulated clearly and acted upon consistently. On a strategic basis as well as a day-to-day -day operating basis, decision making and conflict resolution is simplified by applying defined principles. Without the compass of principles that inspires and expands leadership capacity across and down the organization, leadership is not leadership it's mere supervision reflecting a feudal culture with instruction givers and instruction takers innovation 
and aspiration wilt in this environment. Uh, the next question that we would uh, like to ask you sir is uh, does the knowledge held by the scripture written in a completely different era still hold good today? Uh, the reason for asking this question is that many students find that uh, uh, the scriptures were written uh, some 5000 years ago, 10,000 years ago and some of the even are not dated. So, how those concepts are applicable in this context in today's time? So, if you would like to throw some light on this. Indeed, this is the beauty of Vedanta, designed for inner calm, outer dynamism. These teachings are universal, timeless and applicable across a variety of contexts. The reason is simple, Vedanta gets to the heart of the matter, addresses the core aspects of personality, duty, ethics, interactions, attitudes, learning, knowledge, teamwork, behaviors and outcomes. And applying these concepts is not a one-time act. It is a rich framework that helps you evolve and grow in the desired direction. Again, uh, I would request you to share a brief about the need for uh, Vedanta at work. Need for Vedanta in the workplace is no longer a nice to have, but a dire necessity. To frame this in the context of sustainability, we are seriously falling short of environment responsibility, social justice, ethical governance, individual purpose and finally fulfillment of collective human potential at the level of the firm, all of which is deeply and comprehensively addressed by Vedanta in a very practical way. That is very exciting. And uh, I am sure uh, this might have generated good interest in our viewers and they would like to know more about the Vedanta and what it comprises of. Vedanta as taught to us by Bhagavan Krishna is essentially the principles of living with internal poise and outward dynamism. To do this effectively, one must embrace a variety of core principles that include Dharma, Purushartha, Ashramas, Gunas, Swabhava, Swadharma, Karma Yoga and a few other concepts that make up the body, mind, intellect apparatus as Swami Chinmayananda calls it. Sir, as you mentioned that our dharma is uh, not just about simple living and high thinking and uh, wealth accumulation is not bad, um, that is true. Uh, but uh, another aspect uh, linked to it is the extravagant behavior which leads to environmental damage. So, how that is addressed in our darshan as the uh, world today needs uh, sustainability ideas for ensuring that uh, we go in pace with the uh, environment too along with our development. Absolutely, our darshanas address this directly while discussing desire. The whole point is to be aware of what drives our extravagance, often the hankara, and embrace the power of dharma while pursuing artha. So, what in your opinion is the most powerful yet most underrated offering of our scriptures that could help make a great deal of difference in the workplace today? One of the most powerful concepts is that of varna and gunas which are related to varna. Chapter 18 of the Bhagavad Gita is a beautifully detailed presentation and analysis of this seminal idea. By applying the Varna framework, we can move organizations and institutions from underperforming, often toxic levels to harmonious, high performance workplaces. The Varna system has been historically one of the most poorly understood, underutilized, and abused construct from a Vedanta. Uh, next question that comes to our mind is, uh, if faculty members uh, want to take up these ideas for discussion in the classes, what would be your suggestion to them? That depends on the subject being taught and the level of the students. Broadly, my suggestion would be to focus on communicating principles along with practical examples from day-to-day -day challenges and ethical dilemmas. Directionally, Students should do more self-inquiry to develop conviction 
in each one's swadharma while learning the way of nishkama karma uh, yes sir uh, self uh, reflection definitely is an interesting exercise that can bring positive change so now moving to the next question you offer an interesting online course uh, titled vedant at work so how has been your experience of offering this course so far and what has been the strongest impact uh, you witnessed among those uh, uh, who took the uh, course so they might have shared some feedback with you or you might have observed that uh, it impacted their life in xyz manner so please share uh, these things uh, with us also this program was launched for the first time only in january of 2019 so it's about a year old for me the gold standard is to make vedanta accessible and for participants to say yes we got the concepts we appreciate how this can make a real difference and we will embark on this empowering journey to that end uh, the i must say the the program has gone off uh, exceedingly well it has surpassed my expectations uh, we've got feedback from uh, professionals uh, from engineers from ceos business heads and even from a priest from iskon in australia where uh, the consistent feedback has been that uh, the concepts were articulated and conveyed in a manner that they could be converted into practical execution and obviously it's an iterative process uh, many participants come back and ask questions and we do one on ones as well as a follow up and uh, that's when it creates even more value for each participant to take away and then implement in their lives so that is an uh, interesting uh, insight once again sir and uh, we would like to thank you uh, for your inputs uh, on this uh, important topic so well friends uh, you might have observed that uh, many of us uh, are inclined to our culture at a personal level but uh, when we reach to our professional domain or when we discuss uh, anything in the professional workspace we tend to become uh, less pride of our own culture and we try to uh, tr- uh, try to move away or pretend as if we don't uh, give do- too much importance to our culture but there have been many celebrities many uh, senior scientists many authors who have taken the interest in their culture right from their personal space to the professional space so as to reduce this uh, gap between the work and life and professor harsh prohit in one of his article mentioned about work life natural fusion which was uh, obviously an uh, extension uh, to the idea of work life balance so one such great personality uh, many of you might be knowing him who is commonly known as metro man of india uh shri e shridharan ji in his uh, career of about how many years uh, is a question because he still continues to contribute uh, even after his retirement so he was the one person who contributed to the development of uh, or renovation of the pamban bridge uh, in rameshwaram after it was it was hit by a cyclone so that was the first project that he took in the professional uh, space on a large scale and uh, it was delivered before time and uh, still it holds um, its ground later on when the konkan railway was established he was again the in charge and the project was executed at a highly efficient uh, manner uh, and in a highly efficient uh, the project was again delivered effectively and efficiently later in 2003 when we saw that uh, metro delhi metro project was started the delhi metro rail corporation dmrc was established he was again leading the project and in 2007 the first phase of metro was launched so ma- many a, in in many interviews in uh, discussions with um, uh, Uh, people who like to interview him or take some bites from him he has been sharing that uh, the the motivation to contribute to the social development through technology or through his expertise in railways has come from bhagavad gita and uh, the idea of loka sangraha drives him 
to work for the best for the social interest. And uh, in his interesting uh, biography, uh, which is titled as Karm Yogi, you can find more such examples wherein he ha he follows a disciplined lifestyle which is in accordance with the Indian culture, getting up early, doing some puja and uh, preparing for the office. He used to always go to office 9 am sharp and uh, close his work by 6 am sharp, never took any file to his home and all the projects that he took were delivered on time and uh, with the within the cost or the budget which was sanctioned and most importantly all the time it was all corruption free. So, that was his efficiency and effectiveness and if you will uh, see the professional success of him, he would attribute it to Bhagavad Gita and the strong foundations of Indian culture. Similar cases and stories are in plethora of our so many great leaders and scientists who have done exceptionally well in their professional space. So, we can encourage our students to follow the principles and ideas of our culture to enrich their workplace, their education system, whether they work in health, whether they work in corporate, banking, any of the sector. So, uh, thank you uh, for the patient hearing and we hope the module was interesting for you. Uh, for any views or your feedback, you can always write to us at uh, prime at Thank you.